some time goes by and you get the work done and there's a due date and uh, your customer's coming to pick it up, how do you actually sell them the rest of the work order? Here we are, QuickBooks point of sale. And first I'm gonna say that work orders would be something that you might implement if your store um, possibly does stuff for people like uh, certain services or maybe building something or um, you know, maybe you're, you're gonna tailor something or create something for somebody and it's gonna take a period of time and you're probably gonna have one of your employees do it. Uh, that's the short story on work orders. So uh, work orders are found under the customer orders icon here at the bottom, new work order. But before we jump into that, we are going to check out some settings with the work orders. So under the file menu, we are gonna go to preferences and company. And in the bottom left hand corner here, we have work orders. And you can see that there's a few settings here. So uh, the first one is the initial deposit. This is when you're creating the work order uh, and the work and all that kind of stuff. You don't wanna do all this work and have your customer not come and pick it up because they have nothing invested in it. Uh, so you can either suggest an initial deposit of 10%, 20%, half down, 50%, or you can require that. Uh, if you do not require the initial deposit, then you can save a work order and just go about your day, but your customer might not come back. So suggesting an initial deposit would be a very good thing to do. It's also gonna make it so that you cannot save the work order without the deposit screen popping up and getting your attention, which is a very good thing. Um, you know, if you just save the work order and it didn't pop up to get a deposit, your employees might forget to do that. So I'm gonna say suggest 20%. Now you also have work order statuses. Uh, the default status is gonna be open. Uh, you could put it on hold in pending status or something like that. You can also add your own statuses, um, such as uh, sent to the warehouse and out at the paint shop and hasn't come back yet or something like that or final phase maybe. All these things uh, would be tailored to fit your own workflow, which would help you out very much. Uh, of course, there's a work order message, which is a lot like a receipt message, and that would just go on your work order. So these are the main settings. <clears throat> we also have document numbering, uh, currently set for sequential numbering. You can also have your work order number be like somebody's last name and their sequential number or their uh, your store number in a sequential number, or you can define uh, a custom one. So if you customize this, you might do like, uh, maybe it's a company, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you wanna put in your own slogan and a number after it. So those are all things that you can do, and you can start with a certain number. So that's that in the settings. Now let's jump into making a work order. <clears throat> So as you can see, the status defaulted as open. Uh, we can choose those other ones we made up, uh, or you would switch it to closed if it just goes away. There's, there's a certain way that it closes later if you do it right. Now let's add some items. So I'm gonna add this and this and Okay, so now we've got three pieces here. You may want to assign this to one of your employees. I'm gonna assign this to Sammy P. And then uh, we're gonna head to the bottom of this and it is going to first ask us for our customer. Of course, you're want, gonna wanna put in who's this work order for, who's gonna pick it up type of thing. You can add a new one or you can choose somebody that's already been a customer. We're gonna choose Brad Lamb. Uh, under this button, you can enter shipping info if they're not picking it up and you're shipping it to them. You can also add shipping charges like, you know, $30 for FedEx, and that will go ahead and total up in their bill. Now, description of the problem or the service to be performed. We have three things here, and I'm going to say 
take the uh, sitting angel and put it together with uh, the planter and the Piscina. I don't know how you say that, but uh, anyways, this is an instruction for my employee uh, to go ahead and get this done. And the customer will also see this on the work order so that there's a common understanding of what's being done here. Uh, you may have service items you want to add to this work order. That would obviously be uh, a good thing to make money off of the work that you're doing. And so that's pretty much the gist of it all together now for making a work order. Now, I'm going to tell you that uh, you can take a deposit or payment right here if you want to. But since we made that setting in the beginning, all we have to do is go ahead and save and print. And it's going to pop up and say suggested work order deposit. Uh, the total here is 376. Suggested deposit amount is $75. So yeah, I'm just going to do 75. Hit OK. It's going to pop up this deposit screen where you can take cash, check, credit card, etc., etc., like your regular POS. And so I'm going to accept $75 in cash, and I'm going to save that, and then it's going to print out the work order. And we can see that right here. Now we've got our instructions, our customer, we've got uh, the three items, what they are, and then we've got uh, deposit history of $75 cash taken today. So the customer can walk out with this work order in hand. They know their balance due, and uh, that's that. They have their work order. And so I'm going to exit out. Uh, now you also might want to know that when I go to this work order for Brad Lamb, you may notice that we have no on-hand quantities for these three things. And so as a store owner, I'm going to want to generate a PO for that, a purchase order. I have none of these, so I want to select all, continue, and then I want to print a copy and show a list of purchase order. You send this to your vendor, and it's going to get the items you need to complete this work order. Excellent. Some time goes by, and you get the work done, and there's a due date, and uh, your customer's coming to pick it up. How do you actually sell them the rest of the work order? Back in Brad Lamb's work order here, we pull it up because he just pulled out his piece of paper and showed it to us. We go on the I want to menu and we're going to sell the items. And so here's all the items and I'm going to select all. Might as well copy the work over as well so we can reaffirm it. Hit continue and now it jumps us to the make a sale screen along with our receipt notes being our instructions. The deposit was 75 down here. The amount due today is 301.22, and so Brad's gonna pay that off with cash. There we go. Good job us, good job Brad. Here's Brad's receipt. He's a happy customer because he got the work in his hand today. Okay, thanks for coming along with me on making a work order and completing all the different facets of it and this is QuickBooks Point of Sale. Give us a call if you need any help. Thank you very much.